But I wanted to play this clip because Arsenal are being called winners this season. And, and this is why. Let's listen to what... If this um, is Keo, no, I'm going to get a beer. I'll be back. Yeah, have a little listen, people. If we, we didn't get a chance to see Saliba, and even with Saliba, by the way, in the team, it would have been very difficult for him as well. That's how good City of are. Of course, of course. We accept that. But nonetheless, but it was I know, a blow for us. I know the likes of Rio Ferdinand was leaning on you the other night. So I'll lean on you now. Mm -hmm. Failure, choking, bottling. Those are the kind of words that are being thrown about about Arsenal in some section, in some quarters, Martin. Undeniably, that's the case. Is there progress in failure? Look, of course there is, because they're, they're, they look at where they come from from this time last year, Jim. We were, we slipped out of, of fourth place this time last year to Spurs. We've now secured Champions League position. The number of points they have, the number of matches they've won. Um, it's just about. <laughs> Getting to the next level, Jim, having enough winners in the group, in the pack. And if you look at, I mean, look at the copious amounts of potential defenders that Man City had to choose from the other night. Arsenal, look, nothing against holding, but it was always going to be difficult for him. I think he was fearful that he was going to get, give away an early uh, yellow card. But looking back, he maybe should have done that in the challenge that led up to the first goal. So it's about building for Arsenal, getting a squad that can actually go the f go all the way. At the moment, they've gone some of the way, Jim. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you I called Arsenal winners the other night and Ferdinand pulled you up in that. Yeah, now, was thought, he right I, to I pull think, you up I in that? Was, no, I, because think he, I think he was out of order. I think he was completely <laughs> out. Because what the way that they're building, Jim, you have to win tackles, you win headers, you win matches. I just want to say really quickly about this. But both both him and Simon Jordan after this go on to attack Man United and say they've had a, like they're not had a really good year. That's the one bit where I... I, I, I listen, you, you're, you're allowed to think what Martin Keown thinks. Mm. But you have to then apply that logic to every club. But they don't. He's just applying it to Arsenal. And I've said it all along. You guys have progressed this year. you become title challengers. you become an exponentially better team than you were last year. There is a lot of praise that should go into certain areas. But the way it's fallen apart in the last four games shouldn't be ignored. Must be addressed in the summer. And the standards raised beyond that too. That can't be acceptable again. Because then it would be three years on the bounce. And I, honestly... I think Arteta is going to relay that message to this squad, especially if you guys get the players in the summer you want. But what is your take on this debate that's going on? Are Arsenal winners or not? He's a disgrace. Yeah, he's an absolute disgrace. This guy has won major honours at Arsenal, played for Arsenal twice, two different times here. He's won major honours. He worked under George Graham and he worked under Arsene Wenger. Yeah, that guy's won major honours at this football club. And he's sitting there. Yeah, and Rio Ferdinand, big up Rio Ferdinand, yeah? Yeah, I've got a lot of time for big what up. he says. Yeah, yeah, big up to Ferdinand because he is right what he said. He called him up the other day and, and he said, Oh, yeah, the culture's changed. There's a winning mentality and they're winners. And Rio went, They ain't won anything. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, not but you've either won or you've not. And then he's got the audacity to sit there when he's won all them honors at Arsenal Football Club with the likes of this slot, by the way. Would he have sat there? Yeah, Ray Parler's another one. Ray Parler sat there the other day and said, oh, yeah, well, fourth would have been a type, would, would have been success at the start of the season. Shut up, Ray. We were eight points clear, mate. Yeah, eight points clear, and you're still lording up second. Do me a favour. Would, would these players, Terry, yeah, that have played with legends that have got statues outside the front of the ground, would they have sat there under these iconic managers at the time in George Graham and Arsene Wenger? Would they have sat there in the dressing room at the start of the season and said, well, listen, Man United have got Alec Ferguson, They've got all the money. We can't compete with their money because we couldn't compete with your money. Yeah, you were breaking the transfer record every summer, nicking the best Premier League player that didn't play for you. Rooney, Ferdinand, Carrick. Um, I could go on. Um, Dwight Van York, Van Andy Persie. Cole, Berbatov, Van, Van Persie. Yeah. But I mean, like, that, that was a bit later. But them players... I, I was Rooney, just thinking it in. Yeah. Sorry. But them, them, them players, would he have sat in front of these players and said, well, we, we can't compete with Man United... Look at the players they're signing. Look at the squad they've got. They've got Beckham. They've got Skulls. They've got Giggsy. Now they're adding all of this into it. Yeah, they're like, oh, fourth would be good. No, they wouldn't. So why are they now feeling that like, it's cool to sit on TV or national radio and peddle that narrative? Because they would never have done that with the, these ones behind me. Can you imagine him saying that to Tony Adams and Steve Bold? They would have had him up round the throat, round the neck in the dressing room. I remember a story, yeah, that Lee Dixon told, right? No, sorry, I'm lying. It was Ray Parler told the story about Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon, when he signed from Stoke, it was his first North London derby. Yeah, Steve Bold and Tony Adams had him off the floor, round his throat in the dressing room before kickoff and said, 
this is Stoke boy. Yeah, we do not lose to this lot. Yeah, and he was like, <laughs> yeah, he said, I had the best game I ever had for Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Martin Keown was in that dressing room. Ray Parler was in that dressing room. What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. That, yeah, Ray Parler will nailed on be on the tour of America this summer in our preseason. It'll be the ambassador, the face, whatever you want to call it. Martin Keown's probably trying to worm his way in. Yeah, it's embarrassing, tell. Like, at the end of the day, for me, cool. Nobody expected it at the start of the season. No pundit. Who cares what the pundits say? Like, that are not Arsenal pundits. But even when they're Arsenal pundits, you can't believe anything they're saying because they're lying through their teeth, Terry. Yeah, Ian Wright's come out today or yesterday giving it about phase three. Shut up. Oh, I can't wait for the next phase. Shut up, righty. Right. The, 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 the phase stuff, I've got to say with the phase stuff, it is the best PR Arsenal have done because it's so Marvel. It's so like, like phase three about to begin. I love yeah, it. But, yeah, but Terry, this is, the, this is the problem I have with it. Right? Yeah, when you have got, and I, I know you get a lot of journalists on your channel. I'm not mocking any of them, yeah? Like, and it's not a dig at the, any of the people you have on. It's the ones that go into the press conferences at Arsenal, which are predominantly the same four, five, six people, yeah? Right? They've all got half a million, a million, two million followers online, right? And they're going in there and asking, oh, Mikel, is, that, is, is success finishing second this season? What? What? Why are they not asking the question of... Well, obviously, you were eight points clear, Mikel. If you had invested more money in January, you probably would have won the league. Is that now a regret? That's now a question. But they won't do that, Terry, because 15 years ago, they would have asked these questions. But these football clubs are so smart. Only in England this happens. Yeah, I watched Carlo Ancelotti's press conference yesterday. Mate, the guy's quaking in his boots about his job because they're sticking it on him. <laughs> he has to win the double this season or he's gone. The, the Copa del Rey and the Champions League were sacking him. He won five trophies last season. He won three previously when he was there, and he's quaking about his job. Yeah, At Arsenal, what they've done is they've gone, well, they've got a big reach on social media. Yeah, that one works for gold. That one works for Seabro. Okay, cool. Get him in the back pocket. We'll give him a Thomas Party exclusive. He's signing for Arsenal after Fabrizio said he weren't. Yeah, Charles Watts breaking news. Thomas Party signing for Arsenal. Yeah, David Ornstein. We'll give you the Josh Conkey interview. Yeah, and they're in the back pocket. In direct, they're not taking money out of it, as far as I'm aware, but they're in the back pocket in terms of you be you be putting out what we want at the end of the season or throughout the season transfer. We'll give you a little scoop. Makes you boost, yeah, which boosts their followers. So now more people are inclined to believe that journalist because they got the Thomas Party news right. Then you get the ex-players in your back pocket. Give them a freebie to Australia on the preseason or America on the preseason. They're going to do up all the prop in the world. Right now, you get the biggest fan channel in your back pocket, get them into a press conference a couple of times, which has happened and asked Arteta questions, by the way. That's the biggest fan channel for Arsenal. You get that in the pocket. Now, add up all the millions of people that have got eyes on all of these things. Very, very easy, very, very easy to now con the public and con Arsenal fans. So then when it's me, I'm just one person, Terry. I ain't got any of this. Now, it's your negative. Well, no, I'm not, mate, because I know why we smashed the stadium down. I know why we're, why we're saying phase three. And, and talking about this phases and this and that, yeah, right? Because, like I say, if I go on about Keon Wright, Ian Parler, you'll probably have your channel buried, mate, so I'm going to shut up about them, yeah? Right? But this phases thing, yeah? Right? Well, when did phase three start? Because uh, Charles Watts is telling the world that Mikel Arteta has always maintained that we're in stage three, a uh, phase three of a five phase development plan well how comes that came out two days or a day after we lost to city i know that all season right and it's no coincidence that the pr comes out straight after we bottled it and got battered at city right and now we're not top we can tonight obviously go top but where was this all season gabriel jesus and zinchenko were built up to bring in winning mentality well jesus after the game the other night is saying after the southampton game i think it was oh well we're a young squad well i know them say that all season Every time he spoke, he said, look, we're looking toward... Sinchenko apparently walked in the dressing room on day one and said, we're going for the title. Well, why were you crying at Anfield then, mate, if you've got a winning mentality? Well, I do want to interject for a second. This, this, is all fake. Thing, this, this is the thing, right, where I feel like... Balance... I am listening. Bear with me, sorry. I know you are, mate. I know that balance is now missing in football. But So you get this with City. City fans will say, like, the target isn't Champions League. 
but there's a big poster on the wall in the changing room. In the dressing room. It says our goal. I and see a, it. Jack Greenish getting a, a, a massage. Our goal. It's there, right? So no more bullshit. You, your job is to win it and not winning it. Not in one season, but over a, if, if they don't win it this year, from a European perspective, City have fouled in that area. Now, this is where I'm balanced with it. I disagree with Keown. You are not winners yet. I think you're on your... This is what Keown should be saying. We're on our way. We thought we might do it this year, but we fell short. We now need more investment. We need to raise the standards. We need to go again next year. I'm proud of elements, but call out the things that are wrong still. And this... For me, the reason that it's fallen apart for you guys is when it came to this crunch time, you guys just had a brain fart moment in, in th three or four games. You let the pressure. Believe you're unhyped. That's why. And and, 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 and yeah, and, and there was a choke there. Now, this is the crazy thing. I don't believe in throwing baby out with the bathwater and saying, right, let's rip it all up and start again. But at the same time, it can't just be papered over as there's no, no problem here. This is, was almost like this was what was meant to happen. This is progression. Like, and someone's, someone's called me out here. It's a weird one, but I'll answer it. And says, Terry, your team are bottlers. Uh, you face planted yourself, clown. Uh, put put in, put in all your stock in Arsenal, crime mug. I didn't put all my stock in Arsenal. I gave an opinion <laughs> on Arsenal. Man United, we, 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 we bottled, definitely bottled that, that game against Sevilla after being 2-0 up. And I could mm. admit it. But what my club, and the boys in that talk sport clip go on to speak about Rio can't say Arsenal were bottlers because United bottled. That isn't what's how the world. That, that isn't how the world works. Yeah, what's that got to do with Arsenal? Bottling, exactly. Yeah. When you're talking about Arsenal in isolation, me being a United fan, unless I don't have the same energy for my club, which is nonsense because I do, then it, it, it doesn't mean anything. And that's that's the problem I have with all of this. Can I read I, this I, comment very quickly from on, Jordan Brown? There, it says, Lee, they do this for your fans to get full support instead of being rotten like some with a smiley face. I think he's having a dig at me. Let Probably. me tell you something right now, mate. Yeah. Go and Google Napoli fans and what they did to Zelinsky, Allen and Insigne. Their wives had to relocate house, mate. Yeah. Now go and look at, I'm not condoning any of this. Go and have a look at Sporting Lisbon fans that what they did at the training ground when they broke into it, when the players were there because they failed to make Champions League football. Now go and have a look at Real Madrid fans chasing the footballers out of the stadium after an El Clasico defeat. Yeah, I'm not condoning all of this behaviour, but only in England do we have all of this PR around football clubs. And nine times out of ten, the football clubs that get the best PR are Arsenal, Tottenham and Manchester United. Why? Because all three of them are underachieving and have done for a long, long time. Mate, and I and I agree with that. And like I say, I'm not backtracking on loads of things I've said. I, again, Keown even says something in a video I agree with. I don't think this is Arsenal gone now and they're not going to challenge again next year. I still think you're going to be a very good team. But for me, everything is too absolute and it's becoming very boring. And I call it beta banter now. There was Gooners just Terry, yesterday. More and more people are waking up to it. Because no, no, I, I, know I said to you last week, when Bayern Munich got beaten and Oliver Kahn was doing the speech, do you remember? They were 3-0. I said to you and I said to a load of other people on my streams and other streams, I said, if Arsenal get battered 3-0 or get battered heavily at, at the Etihad, I guarantee you Arsenal post out there, heads up, on to the next. No, and I understand and what that. Happened, they, they must have watched the show because they word perfect said it. Bro, bro, and, and, we, and, we, and we get this a lot from clubs and I call it out. It's like when Liverpool knew, oh, we're probably not going to get Bellingham. So let's go out now and say the whole... Oh, you know, too expensive, irresponsible to spend that amount of money. You even heard Klopp do a little bit of PR yesterday. It was so brilliant when he's like fans moaning about starting lineups and transfers when there's so many more important things in the world to worry about. And I'm like, yo, they're doing it again. But that's the issue. There are more important things going on in the world than football. Football is but our football escapism. Is the release from the more important exactly. things in the world. And we, and we want it to be done right. But I just want to make my point around the, the beta banter, that I call it now. I saw Gunas three days ago, three days ago, say that, United are only in the top four because it's a poor, poor league this year. Three days later, Mikel Arteta is saying it's the, the best and most competitive type of league in 22 years. The same yeah, Arsenal fans... Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, 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 but that's not, that's not the point I'm making. The same Gunners telling me it was a weak league. Okay, and Arteta's right. And I'm like, that's the problem with this, this weird beta banter era now. It's like people are talking out of both sides of their mouth. The banter shit. The analysis is becoming boring. 
and it's be honest and be balanced at least in what in, in terms of what you do. But let me just do don't some, get let, you anywhere. Uh, okay, let me do somebody. And, and yeah, but I, again, I know it don't get you anywhere, but we need the majority to not worry about that. 